I'm continuing to go through the PowerPoint slides from Peter Carter of the Climate Emergency Institute. Recently, uh, Peter Carter and Regina Valdez and myself have been working with Heidi and Charles, and we've been putting together a bunch a video per week on um, under a forum we call the Climate Emergency Forum. And uh, we're basically practicing presentations, um, or we'll use these presentations at the climate conference, the COP, this year, if it's um, done virtually. And if it's done, um, you know, if it's, if, it, if it's a conference in person, if things open up, um, then we'll be attending and, and presenting, hopefully. So I'll just get right into these slides, because I've got quite a few slides to cover still in this video. Um, and uh, I'll just try to focus on the key point. So the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere is tracking the worst case scenario, RCP 8.5. So this is, a, this is a, an update last year. And this is the, what we expect. This is the original CO2 trajectory expected for um, RCP 8.5. And it, we're focusing here about 2020, so it's just a section of the curve shown here. The, RC, the representative concentration pathway 8.5, um, in the model it was 412 ppm, okay? And the actual December 2020 number was 414.75. So the CO2 level is actually rising quicker than the worst case scenario modeled by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the RCP 8.5 scenario. Okay, this is CO2. So we're seeing an acceleration of global CO2 emissions and the resulting atmospheric CO2 levels. So this is atmospheric CO2 levels, the, um, the uh, purple curve or pink curve, and this is global CO2 emissions. So they're tracking here very, very nicely. The other main greenhouse gases are methane and nitrous oxide, and those are also accelerating. So here's methane. This is methane uh, accelerating here, and methane paused from about 2000 to 2007, and then there's been a strong uptick. Atmospheric methane is 235% higher than its 80,000 year ice core limit of 800 parts per billion. Nitrous oxide, is higher than its 80,000 year ice core limit, which was 300 parts per billion, by just over 10%, 10-11%. So it's, it's approaching, here it is, it's uh, 333 parts per billion. The global warming potential of, 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 it, of this is very high, it's about 300 or so. Methane, um, you know, is much, much higher than, than CO2. And I may do a separate paper on, a separate uh, video on you know, what methane global warming potentially actually is, how it can be calculated. So here's methane. Um, so this is the um, anthropogenic methane emissions. This is, um, these, um, are, these are going to be in the IPCC 6 assessment report, these, these images. And here's where methane is uh, right here, you know, um, and it's tracking uh, worst case uh, scenarios as well. So here's the observations of methane. This is kind of blown up just for the local area here. And this is the RCP 8.5 scenario. This is the observations of methane. Um, and these are the lower scenarios. This is the 2.6 scenario. So the observations are, they're, they're uh, not quite in the middle between these two scenarios, RCP 8.5 and RCP 6.0, I believe. Okay, this is uh, another image of methane. So we had stabilization between 2000 and 2007, and then a strong renewed growth curve. Now, the growth rate, um, this is the isotopic uh, signature of the methane, and because it's actually dropping, this isn't the concentration, there's less of the, del less of the 13 carbon in the, in the uh, methane that's emitted. If you do an isotopic analysis on the carbon, there's less 13 carbon, it's decreasing, meaning that there's a lot of strong feedbacks going on with methane. Um, the growth rates of methane um, were the highest in 2014, 12.7 parts per billion that year. Uh, 
Next high is 2019, 10.7 parts per billion increase in the one year, and 2015, so 10.1. So three years where it's been over 10, which is incredibly high. Nitrous oxide here is far exceeding the, the worst case scenario. Uh, the SSPs in the next IPCC report, the AR6, they're going to use something, instead of using RCPs, they're switching to something called Shared Socioeconomic Pathway, SSPs. Okay, um, they, and they've switched before. They switched from something else to RCPs before, right? I, I'm not sure why they can't just use one metric, right? It makes it easier to compare report to report. But anyway, there's, there's what um, nitrous oxide is doing. This is what it's doing here, and it's far exceeding any of the worst case scenarios. So if you, if you look at it here, this is a plot again of nitrous oxide increase. This is a derivative or that's on this scale. This is the slope or the yearly increase on this scale. So, you know, we were generally in over here, maybe about three quarters of a parts per billion per year. And, you know, we're actually, we reached uh, closer to 1.5 parts per billion per year increase here. Okay, so the rate of increase is increasing. Here's where we currently are, and these, this is the worst case scenario. For, you know, um, and one of the reasons nitrous oxide is increasing so much is there's accelerating amounts from the soil in these feedback processes. So this model was showing, you know, if you take climate only effects of nitrous oxide, that's looking at the infrared spectroscopic signature of nitrous oxide in the atmosphere, you get this type of temperature rise. But when you include all the feedbacks from the soils, et cetera, you get this rise, which is much sharper than this rise. And then we can combine all of these greenhouse gases into something called CO2 equivalent. Okay, and that uses the global warming potential of all the greenhouse gases and combines them. So this is the gigatons of CO2 equivalent. The emissions rise from 1970 to 2020. And you can see, you know, it's approaching 60 gigatons CO2 equivalent here. And it was under 30 here. So it's almost, it's, it's basically uh, doubled from 1970 to now. Okay, it's not slowing down. It's just accelerating. Here's another image of of it and uh, we've actually the co2 equivalent of all greenhouse gases it reached 508 parts per million in 2020 okay this is in state of the climate 2020 that report by the commonwealth scientific and industrial research organization so 508 parts per million okay in 2020 the atmospheric co2 equivalent and again there's some plots here we are here um, you know in 2019 the RCP 8.5 model showed we would expect 448 parts per million CO2 equivalent, but we're actually 500, we actually exceeded, well, we reached 500 in 2019. Far, far above the worst case scenario. And in 2020, we reached 508. So this thing is growing. So all of the greenhouse gases together are combining to uh, cause a huge problem. There's no policy. There's no policy scenario that describes this, so they need to create the new policies, right? They're all too conservative. Um, global greenhouse gas emissions have tracked the business as usual scenario for the past 10 years, okay? So in other words, there's been no real change in the global emissions pathway in at least the last decade. So we're not making progress on addressing climate change. OK, and, uh, you know, there's uh, you can look at the these emission gap assessments in these special reports and there's been no real change in the global emissions pathway in the last decade. So we're not we're just not making any progress. So that, of course, this is causing great rises in the global average surface temperature. 2020 was a record equal or marginally higher than the 2016 record. 2016, of course, was boosted by a strong warming El Nino. 2020 was under a cooling La Nina. 2020 was a record, new record for a non-El Nino year. Um, I don't like the trends in the Pacific um, near the equator um, that are starting to show a lot of warming in El Nino 1 and 2 regions. And hopefully, you know, so that could, if that develops into a full-fledged, powerful El Nino, then this year 2021 will set a huge record. It'll blow away the previous record. 
the NASA uh, Global, um, the NASA GIS, um, Goddard Institute of Space Science, um, they do, they model the Arctic quite nicely. So their record showed uh, global warming in 2020 at 1.3 degrees Celsius. And that's relative to the 1881 to 1920 baseline. Global temperature is accelerating. It's increasing faster than ever. The land surface heating is now above 1.5 Celsius. It's, it's 1.6 degrees Celsius over the land. Okay, and you can see the huge warming in Siberia. You can notice the global warming hole here, which I've talked about. Um, and this is the uh, curve here. Okay, 1.3 degrees Celsius. Okay, um, so the growth rates are increasing, right? They're, they're, they're increasing ever more. This is over the land and the ocean. The Copernicus number um, basically had 2020 tied with 2016. Um, and these are some of their images of the heat. So very similar to the, the GIS data. Uh, very, very warm over here in Siberia, the global warming hole here. And you can see the accelerating annual uh, rates. And here we are at 2020. These are the different, the dots are the different places here. Um, and the annual decadal increases are, get down kitty cat, are, are one degree Celsius per decade. These are the decadal global mean surface temperature changes. Come on down. You're going to spill my coffee. Come on down. Okay. He, he's, uh, yeah. Okay. So 2011 to 2020, right here, all of the different um, data sets for global average temperature, you know, exceeding records here. One degree Celsius per decade warming. Global warming index is record increase. This index, you remove the external influences, the effects of La Nina's, El Nino's, the ENSO effects, and also volcanoes. So you isolate the surface temperature increase caused by human emission alone, and you see this is what you get, and the number is 1.17 degrees Celsius. Okay, that was on January 24th, 2021. Okay, so that's the index. And uh, so basically, you know, we're tracking the world case scenario because of the system inertias with no global emergency emissions response. We're likely to pass 1.5 Celsius by 2035 and 2 degrees Celsius by 2045. And this is relative to the uh, baseline at the turn of the century. Like I say, we're already at 1.6 if you take this relative to 17, uh, 1750. So, here we go. Um, okay, so this is, uh, this is where those numbers come from. This is the global warming, the temperature anomaly here relative to 1850 to 1900. You can see the curves here. This is the recorded temperature in red. And we can project one will pass 1.5 and one will pass two. And it's very, very soon, 2035 and 2045 for 1.5 and two. That's relative to 1850 to 1900. Add 0.3 to those numbers, and I say will be 1.8 by 2035 and 2.3 by 2045, relative to the 1750 baseline. Now, some of the impacts, of course, there's natural catastrophes. There's more and more meteorological events, hydrological events like floods and climatological events, extreme temperature, drought, forest fire. This is from... Um, this is insurance uh, payouts, okay? The number of events that are paid out that are tracked by insurance companies. Accelerating global heat is occurring. Heat waves in US cities happening more often and a longer duration. Australia, look at that spike in 2020. The oceans, we're getting surface temperature increasing, dissolved oxygen decreasing. Warmer water can't hold as much um, dissolved gases pH is dropping, so the acidification is rapidly rising. 93% of the greenhouse gas heat is going into ocean heat, and I've shown this chart. The ocean heat is rapidly accelerating. Um, this is the surface increasing. To, this is mid-bathymetry mid, uh, and the deep ocean. They're all warming. Incredibly huge increases in ocean warming. And I think I'll uh, end up here. Okay, there's a few more slides. Please have a look at them. Um, but the last slide is on the climate feedback. So 
check out this. It's excellent information. Thank you for listening.